This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. We play fake news or not with that fall camp news next on Michigan Podcast. But there's going to be one team that's going to play solely as a team. No man is more important than the team. No coach is more important than the team. The team, the team, the team. Let's see for Anthony Wait for it. Hit. Caught. This is no time for that. In the pocket and a sack. Tim Jamison. Brady gets terrific. Throws it. Get it. Touchdown night again. Schultz just before Brazil got it. And a leaping interception by Woodson. Harbaugh back to throw over the middle. Caught by Kohler. The five on his feet. Touchdown, Michigan. On his way. It's good. He's 5'7", 179 pounds. A junior at Michigan. But Jamie Morris packs a wallop. And he delivers for Bo Schindler. And here's your first play. Pressure coming. Second. It is Glenn Steele, number 81, who fought his way through the traffic. Option. And Robinson calls his own number, and he's going to score. Oh, an easy touchdown for Donald Robinson and Michigan. Win it. We're going to win the championship again because we're going to play as a team. And when we play as a team, and the old season is over, you and I know it's going to be Michigan again. Michigan. Go Blue, I'm Steve Dace, and welcome to another week of Michigan Podcast. My partner at WolverineDigest.com, as well as WTKA and Ann Arbor talk show host Michael Spath will be joining us a little bit later on as we play fake news or not with that alleged news leaking out of fall camp, some of it from the coaches themselves. How much of it are we really buying? Because a lot of sunshine and unicorns gets peddled this time of year. And and that's really where I want to begin. I, I don't care. You know, we get fans. I hear from you in the comments section uh, and in the email and on Twitter all week long. We get fans from teams, not Michigan, that watch us and, and listen to us each week. And so what I'm about to share with you really amounts to, I think, a, a good handy tool regardless of who your favorite team is, all right? And, and, and these are my three rules for fall camp news, all right? How, how you, as a discriminating consumer, uh, as, a, as, a, as a person, as a homo sapien of discernment, how you should handle all of the be, uh, 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 optimism, that's the word I'm looking for, optimism that gets uh, peddled this time of year, all right? Rule number one. Rule number one is no news is Gary Ganoos, especially because that usually means you escaped serious injury. Now, I need to apologize for the somewhat clunky Great Space Coaster reference, but I just turned 46 years old and nostalgia is about all I have right now. Um, I'm on the I'm on the down downside of life, as they like to say. But um, you know, no news was Gary Ganoos when I was a little kid. And and this time of year, you're looking. You want to make sure you're not making any news unless there's like a position battle. You're you got a starting quarterback battle going on. Okay, but that aside, you want to make sure you're not you're not making any news that hits what we call in the biz that bottom third. You know, that little crawler at the bottom of your screen there, we call that the lower, the bottom third. That's what, that's the, the lingo here in, in, in the business, Snoop Dogg. You don't want to do anything that makes that, that, that unless it's naming a new starting quarterback. Because let me tell you how you make that, uh, that lower third. Somebody got busted or somebody got broken. All right. Uh, serious injuries. Uh, somebody uh, decided to enjoy the nightlife a little too much uh, or, or end up uh, in the police blotter. You want to avoid making the lower third news, all right? So no news is Gary Ganoos. You, in fact, if, if, if you got this thing on lockdown, 
quiet is kept, particularly if you think your team's going to be good. You want, we get to mid, mid August, like right now, the ideal situation is you're thinking, man, is this camp ever going to end? When is, when's the season going to get here? Cause that means everything's on the down low. Everything is on lockdown. That's what you want. That brings us to rule number two for how to interpret fall camp news. Everybody reportedly doing well on your team means someone on your team is not since they're only playing each other right now. So if you're, if you're like, oh man, our defensive front's going to be dope. It's dominating every practice. I read it at the rival site. Uh, that means you got some problems on the offensive line there, Sonny. Okay. So the ideal situation is a give and take. You know, there's an ebb and flow through camp. It's, it's competitive on both sides, right? Because you're only playing each other. And so everything's a zero sum game. If, if one unit is excelling, it means it's at the expense of another unit, both of them on your team. Okay. So also keep that in mind when you're thinking, oh man, I think our receivers are legit. That, that could just mean your secondary sucks. Right. So again, it's a zero sum game. You want a, you want an ebb and flow where the two sides are playing more give and take. You definitely don't want to go through a camp where one side of the ball or a couple of units or are, are key units are dominating the other. Cause that means you got trouble right here in river city. All right. And that's fall camp news rule number three. And it's this one. Consider that coach's pedigree when determining how much stock to put into the unicorn and rainbows this time of year. All right, so Coach Zordich here at Michigan, for example, has a track record of making young players in the secondary instant impact, dependable players. So when when he goes and waxes poetic about somebody who has no real experience or is an unproven player, I'm inclined to believe it, right? If you've got a new coach or somebody who hasn't necessarily had a great track record of getting young guys ready to go and perform at a high level, experience be damned. Oh, pretend you live in Missouri and and you've got to show me. Okay, so you need to keep that coach's pedigree in mind when you consider how much to let yourself mainline on the Kool-Aid this time of year. Which brings us to Michael Spath. He'll join us a little bit next or a little bit later on as in next as we play a little game called Fake News or Not. All of these are actual headlines coming out of fall camp for Michigan. How many of them, though, are real news, and how many of them are the fake variety? Michael Spath will give us his take next. If you like what we do here at Michigan Podcast, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Several of you do that already. Thank you very much. Just $5 a month uh, it will get you access to all of our content. And now that the season is here, you're going to get more and more exclusive content here from Michigan Podcast on Patreon, including our exclusive uh, game day reaction, instant reaction podcast. Uh, you'll get exclusive access to my weekly point spread picks as well here that will be posted right here on our Michigan Podcast Patreon page. And tonight, uh, the Big Ten Network is in Ann Arbor for tonight's practice. 10 o'clock Eastern is going to be the practice special. I'm going to be doing, right after that show ends, an exclusive podcast for our $5 or more a month Patreon supporters right here at Michigan patreon.com slash Michigan Podcast. That'll be tonight, right after the Big Ten Network special. You don't want to miss that. All right. And those of you that uh, you want to give a little bit more, $25 a month and join our booster club, uh, where you also will get your name, uh, maybe your, your business mentioned in the credits and a shout out on the show. Thank you to all of you that have supported us already. Thanks in advance to those of you that are willing to sign up now that the season is here. Go blue. And we're back here on Michigan podcast and we're joined by my partner at WolverineDigest.com. Also the host of his own show on WTKA in Ann Arbor. Michael Spath is here with us. Michael, good to have you back here on Michigan podcast, man. How are you? I'm doing terrific. We're only two Saturdays away from the debut of the Michigan football team and uh, only one Saturday away from college football. So uh, every step we, we inch closer is glorious, Steve. Indeed. Indeed. Our long national nightmare, Michael, is almost over. So I want to play... Well, well hold on. <laughs> Our long national nightmare is uh, losing to Ohio State, not win a Big Ten title. So that we're going to have to wait still a little bit longer to, to see. But, uh, but to your point of... You know, without football, yes, that, that, you know, 
that nine month uh, nightmare is coming to an end. Well, that's a national nightmare. What, what's gone on against uh, Ohio State has been a, a cosmic uh, a punishment, is what that has been. And hopefully, hopefully we that that will end uh, when we get to November. But until then, I want to play a little game with you. Now that we're about halfway through fall camp, we're going to play a little game called Fake News or Not. And I've got a collection okay. of, of seven statements that are either can be directly attributed to Michigan coaches or Michigan what Michigan media has said about the Michigan football team during fall camp. You know, we're trying to figure out what's sunshine and rainbow and unicorns and what's what's on the real. OK, so we're going to share these seven statements one at a time and you're going to tell us, is it fake news or not? And why you ready to go? Absolutely. All right, here we go. Statement number one. This is the deepest and most talented offensive line Michigan has had in at least a decade. Michael Spath, is that fake news or not? That is a truth. That is truth. Um, you know, when you look at it, Michigan, I, I would say for the first time in, uh, boy, at least since like 2000 and maybe seven, which is more than a decade, uh, you can feel really good about seven, eight, potentially nine players. Um, the fact that there is a heated competition for the starting right tackle spot, and it's not a, you know, uh, hey, we're going to play this guy out of default, which a lot of the battles have been in the past. Um, there are two legitimate contenders. I think that's a great sign. Uh, Steven Spinellis is someone that, um, you know, you could probably throw on a Lloyd Carr team, a Gary Moeller team, a Bo Schembechler team as, as someone that just waits in the wings for three and now four years to get his shot and then takes over uh, when there's finally an opening. Um, and I think we're seeing that uh, from a, from an upperclassman who can play, you know, either guard spot uh, or, or at center. Uh, you know, they're, they feel pretty good about Chuck Filiago, one of the higher ranks recruits in that uh, class a couple of years ago out of Texas um, as an interior player. They've got uh, some youngsters coming up that are in that freshman class between Nolan Rumler uh, Trenty Jones that they feel really good about. So this is the this is the first time that I can recall in probably um, at least a decade where there are three uh, three or four players, but really three guys um, that could all be starting for Michigan, but won't start for Michigan. So no, that's definitely not fake news. That is that is some uh, sweet sweet truth. All right. Let's get to statement number two. Is this fake news or not? This is the fastest defensive line Harbaugh has ever had. Is that fake news or not? Uh, I think that's fake news. And I don't know how to quantify that. Um, you know, when, when I hear coaches talk about, well, we're faster and stronger than we were a year ago. Has any coach have, ever well, said, Michael, we're slower and fatter than we were last year? Has any coach ever said that well, like ever? No, I've, not, I've never heard that. And also, if you're going to go out there and say, hey, we're a faster, stronger team than we were a year ago, you want to be a little bit like, well, what the hell were you doing last year? <laughs> you know, why weren't you strong and fast a year ago? And, look, I mean, they had they had one of the great freak athletes of all time, Sean Gary. Uh, I can't imagine that Aiden Hutchinson, even though there's some, a lot of high praise about Aiden Hutchinson, that he's faster than Rashawn Gary. And could he pay up against Chase Winovich? I mean, you know, just two years ago, we had Maurice Hurst uh, at defensive tackle for Michigan, and um, he was an extremely quick player off the ball. No, I don't, I don't buy into that because I think it's more just a, a coach speak that they like to trot out there uh, and not really anything that has value. I mean, I guess maybe they've taken all their defensive linemen and they've put them on a 40-yard dash and they've lined them all up and they've taken the average – 40-yard dash time, and it's the best 40-yard dash time. But until they tell me that specifically, Steve, I think it's just some type of platitude that, that we hear uh, year after year about them always being stronger, faster, tougher, uh, you know, smarter, any of those that we always hear. All right. Statement number three for Michael Spath as we play some fake news or not here on Michigan Podcast. Running back is the deepest position on the offense. Ooh. Uh... God, who's, who told who said that one? Josh Gaddis. Josh that. Gaddis said that. Well, I don't. To me, I, I don't agree. I, I would say wide receiver uh, is the deepest position, or even quarterback. The fact that you have 
two legitimate starters at the quarterback position, and your number three is one of the higher-end developmental prospects that they've had in a long time in Joe Milton. Uh, when I look at running back, I mean, you know, it's a little bit he, – he, I heard his comments about how I, I feel like we can have any guy uh, go in there and, and carry the ball. But that's because they, they have so many that are on the same level right now. Um, yeah, you've got five guys that are competing for that starting job, but you also have four of those guys that are complete unknowns. Uh, so I don't look at that as, as depth. Um, I look at the wide receiver position where uh, Nico Collins, Donovan Peoples-Jones, uh, Ronnie Bell a little bit a year ago, Tariq Black, who was supposed to be the best player a couple of seasons ago, Mike Sainer still, now the rise of Cornelius Johnson, a true freshman wide receiver, hearing good things about you know, when you've got a lot more proven players and you've got five guys uh, at a spot, I feel a lot better about that uh, than I do the, the running backs. So, so I would say that's fake news, that it's the deepest uh, running back group, or that the running backs are the deepest uh, position on the offense. All right, statement number four as we play fake news or not with Michael Spath from WTK in Ann Arbor. Shea Patterson is playing lights out. Is that fake news or not? From everything that I've been told, in addition to hearing the comments from Josh Gaddis and from uh, some of uh, some of Shane Patterson's teammates, I-, I think that sounds legit. Um, you know, being a quarterback in year two with Harbaugh, uh, having an opportunity to, to go through an entire you know a second spring ball, an entire second uh, fall camp, uh, a guy who has always had really high potential. Uh, we saw some strong flashes of it especially in September and in uh, mid-October from Shea Patterson. Uh, no, I really think that he's capable of taking a big step forward and, and, and being the guy um, that we were kind of thought we were going to see a year ago uh, for the entirety of a season. And we, it really just didn't – it was it was up and down. It was good moments, uh, some not-so-good moments, but really – uh, it just kind of it just kind of fell off in November there, um, but no, I'm, I've heard some really positive things about it too. So I think uh, with the combination of experience he has, being in Harbaugh system for a second year, the track record of, of quarterbacks developing under Harbaugh, especially in year two, uh, and just his his com- his camaraderie, his rapport with the wide receivers, the offensive line, uh, I think that's 100 percent true. All right, so we've gone through four statements so far. You're two and two on what is fake news or not. All right. We have three more. Okay. All right. From Michael Spath. Here we go. Josh Ross is the smartest linebacker Don Brown has ever coached. I mean, if it is, then, you know, I'm not going to say Don Brown is a liar. It's a little bit different than when he says the fastest defensive line because I, I doubt that they have uh, kept like some type of measurement. If he thinks he's the smartest linebacker he's ever had, then I will trust Don Brown in that particular comment. Um, again, I don't, I don't think that is him quantifying it by having him take an SAT or an ACT or an IQ test. Uh, I think he's just really impressed with the knowledge and the instincts of someone like Josh Ross being in the right place at the right time. And I don't think we should confuse him necessarily saying he's the smartest linebacker as the same thing as he's the best linebacker. Uh, because, you know, just because you have all the intelligence in the world doesn't mean that you're always in the right play or that you make the right play at the right time. But, um, you know, Josh Ross is a, is a kid from Orchard Lake St. Mary's, a, a prep school here in Michigan that, um, you know, is very well regarded for its academics. Uh, last year when he played, as significantly as he did, as both Devin Bush and Devin Gill's backup, uh, one of the things that they raved about him was that he was a very intelligent player. Um, you know, going back and watching his film, he does seem to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, he he doesn't, doesn't take himself out of the play very often, uh, not necessarily making the play like we saw in the, uh, in the bowl game against Florida. Um, but, yeah, I can buy that. I think that's probably truth. All right, two more. So it's three to two on fake news or not. Michael Spath says three of these have been true. What about number six? Donovan Peoples-Jones is completely healthy. Is that fake news or not? That's fake news. That's fake news. And I don't I don't know why. I don't know the incentive, I guess, for, for it to really kind of, uh, for the coaches to say that. Uh, when we have heard, and I and I think, um, you know, I, I know that the folks at 24/7 Sports even had a update uh, about it, saying that he had 
uh, taking some time off. I talked to a practice insider uh, who said that he, he takes some time off during practices. Uh, the, the doctor that I spoke to over the summer said his groin injury is the kind of groin injury that requires an extensive amount of rest to get it to 100%. Now, you can practice and you can play and go out there and compete, and, and most people won't recognize a huge difference. Uh, but, but when you're done with that with that game, uh, you need a couple of days to recuperate. So, uh, no, I think that that is fake news. I do think that he's going to be effective. I do think that Michigan has a really, ga- really good plan in place to take advantage uh, of Donovan Peoples-Jones and whatever role he can, he can give them physically. Uh, but, you know, there's a reason why so far in fall camp we've heard glowing things about Nico Collins. We've heard really positive reports about Ronnie Bell and about Tariq Black and Mike Sainer still, and we really haven't heard this overwhelming, effusive praise of Donovan Peoples-Jones, and a big part of that is because he can't go out there and be the absolute best that he's capable of because of his uh, groin injury. All right, our final statement to find out if you think this is fake news or not, Michael Spath. Unless you commit to playing in every game you're healthy for, you will no longer get to be a team captain at Michigan. So that was that that was kind of intimated by Jim Harbaugh in a podcast, I believe, and then I'm assuming this is the the, the specific words of a of a, a member of the media. Is that correct? Yeah, Chris Ballas of the Wolverine. Yes. Okay. So, huh. I mean, Steve, how are they going to patrol that? They're going to not announce captains until the end of the season? A little Rich rod ask. I mean, if you name a captain, if Jim Harbaugh, who, who Chris Ballas has said, uh, is going to have much more input on who the, the, uh, the, the captains are, but you still allow the players to vote, okay, here we go. We're, we're Cleve Hudson. You name Cleve Hudson your starting captain. You believe this guy is all in. He's going to play through um, some injuries. He's going to play in every game. You go through the Ohio State game. Uh, you don't end up making the playoff. And someone tells Khalid Hudson, hey, you're a projected first-round pick in the top 15. And his agent says, you know, why don't you, why don't you sit out? And Khalid Hudson weighs up, well, thinks about it, weighs it, ultimately decides not to, to play in the game. What's the recourse of him being a captain? They're going to take that, that C off his, off his jersey? He doesn't get to be like an official captain in the history books of the Michigan football? I don't know how you – I mean, I think I actually saw the coach you're talking about. I don't know how you proactively say that. It's really a retroactive thing because – Well, you're going to have to get them Devin to preemptively Bush. give you their word on an honor code that they will play every game that they're healthy for. Okay, well, what, well what's that worth? I, mean, I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, if it's not worth much, yeah, you probably I, I, don't want to name him your captain the other way then, right? I mean, if you if you can't trust him to give you your yeah. word, then you probably don't want him to be the captain, regardless of what you think about this particular issue, wouldn't you say? Right? Right. Right. No, I, I agree. But, I mean, it's I, th- I think to tell a kid, tell a player, like, look, like, you're not being named captain unless you 100% promised me that you're going to play in every game that you're healthy – I mean, I get it, and I understand Jim Harbaugh being frustrated by a couple of those players sitting out the bowl game last year. But what happens if, if something comes up, that guy's banged up a little bit going into the bowl game, and it's a meaningless bowl game here? I just I think it's it's something that we, we can talk about, but proactively, maybe you, what, you get him to sign a contract, and then come January 1st, you're holding that contract in front of his face and saying, you promised me you, you were supposed to be an honorable guy. I, I don't... I don't know if that plays out super well. Um, I think what it ultimately comes down to is, you know, you stress every day to these guys that they're the captains and there is a standard to live up to, and you hope that they do it. But I don't I don't let you can enforce uh, such a rule is all I'm saying. Final thing before we let you go. And so you thought three of those statements were true. Four were fake news, basically. So... Final thing before we let you go, Michael Spath, you had uh, a segment on your radio show this morning in Ann Arbor. Uh, some of the insights from your practice insider. Can you give us a couple of big, um, you know, overarching uh, nuggets, and themes that uh, you want to pass on to our audience here at Michigan Podcast from what you've heard so far? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, you know, at the quarterback spot, um, my particular insider is really excited 
about the possibility of both Shea Patterson and Dylan McCaffrey playing in the same game, uh, not necessarily at the same time, and utilizing a weapon. Uh, he compared it to, look, you've got a third down running back. You've got pass rush specialists that come in. Uh, you've got guys that you know now cover slot receivers. You've got a Viper, an entirely creative position. Why would you not, if, if one of your best players on your offense was Dylan McCaffrey, why would you not find some type of role for him? Uh, he, he acknowledged, though, what you see in practice often doesn't come to fruition in games because coaches get nervous, they get scared. Uh, the, the, the quarterback, the starting quarterback is playing a certain way. They don't want to disrupt the chemistry and the momentum. But he's excited about that. Um, the running back spot, you know, he said that right now Drew Wilson is the leader uh, to start. Um, and, the, the, you know, in his mind, the, the, the rest of the packing order was Ben Van Sumer in second, Zach Charbonnet three, Christian Turner four, uh, Hassan Haskins five. Um, thinks everybody's going to get an opportunity in the first couple of games to showcase what they can do because even though the coaches create situations and they put these guys in practice scrimmages, you don't really know until the lights go on. You know, 2004, David Underwood and Jerome Jackson are supposed to be the guys. By week three, by week four especially, Mike Hart was the starting running back. Um, that happens, you know, quite often. And then the, the third big thing he was talking about was actually Donovan Peoples-Jones and Ambry Thomas and their health situation. And, uh, you know, mentioned that he thinks Donovan Peoples-Jones is going to be limited throughout the year. I uh, would be surprised to see him return punts because of the explosion uh, that it takes on those particular punts and how that can just, you know, be a little bit too much for him to do in a single game. And is that Ambry Thomas, the, the cornerback, uh, he would be surprised if he's back anytime before the Wisconsin game. It doesn't expect him to come back and be uh, a you know look, number two cornerback opposite Lavert Hill, akin to a David Long. Things was going to be a year long process uh, for him to develop and, and really kind of uh, emerge as a, as a as a key player for the Michigan defense. Great stuff, Michael Spath. As always, thanks for joining us this week again here on Michigan Podcast, brother. Go Blue. We'll do it again next week. All right, looking forward to it already. Thanks, guys. Take care. Hey, if you want to keep up with what we think about Michigan athletics all week long in between episodes of Michigan Podcast, check out our website at wolverinedigest.com. For example, we've got a brand new story up there looking at all of the potential starting fives in the Big Ten now that Franz Wagner is in the fold for the Wolverines, and you can see where Michigan stacks up against the rest of the conference. Uh, There's ways to keep up with our coverage of the football team, basketball. Uh, We've added hockey and baseball as well. So a ton of stuff that you can follow along with here. Uh, And we have a video each and every morning we put up as a way of just saying kind of good morning uh, and catching you up on whatever the big news was from overnight for the Michigan Wolverines. So you can follow us on the website, recruiting too at wolverinedigest.com. This week's Twitter results, we asked you which phrase best describes your approach to fall camp scuttlebutt. Almost 50% of you said, do more, say less. That's kind of a running joke in the Michigan media because so many of you uh, send them emails and tweets that just say, shut up, do more, say less. I don't want to hear about the co- how, how great the team is till they beat Ohio State. 33% of you say, trust but verify. I would kind of be in that camp. 19% of you, though, are injected into my veins. I can't get enough. Let's get to our question of the week this week from Isaiah Morris, who says, the anonymous coach quotes from Athlons, Still seems skeptical that Harbaugh will truly turn the offense over to Josh Gaddis. Are you? Nope. I mean, it's too late now. They're pot committed, uh, if you will. They have, uh, they, they've reached the, the beachhead. They've landed on the shore, and then they burn the boats. They can't get back and go back, even if they want to. Essentially, on some level, some level, Jim Harbaugh is gambling his, his tenure at Michigan on this over the next two years. I mean, this is going to be a radical departure, a massive paradigm shift, and it's either the missing link that this program has lacked to take that next step that many of us thought we would take by now, or it's demonstrative of there is no next step under Jim Harbaugh, and this may be as good as it gets, Mr. Jack Nicholson, and then we'll have to have a whole different conversation. So absolutely not. I don't see Harbaugh going back. Absolutely, I believe Josh Gaddis is totally in control for better or for worse, and soon we'll have games and we'll know which one it is.
Well, that'll do it for this week's episode of Michigan Podcast. Want to thank all of you for tuning in. Don't forget, like, subscribe, five-star rate as appropriate, either on YouTube or your podcast platform of choice. Share with all the Michigan fans you know about what we're doing here each week at Michigan Podcast as well. You're our best word of mouth, the best chance for us to continue to grow and get the word out about the maize and blue. You can also follow us all week on Twitter at Michigan Podcast. Some exciting stuff we're going to be announcing soon for Wolverine Digest. You don't want to miss out on that. And thank you as well to our friends at Detroit Sports Podcast for spreading the word about this show each week too. Until the next week and the next episode, go blue.